how would you, you tell people that you person? How would you tell people that you person? How would you tell people that Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hi, the Dapper Dinosaur here. First, yeah, I got a new floor, fresh from the Skeksis Castle on Thra. Just got it installed yesterday and I'm rather happy with it, since, you know, white tiles are boring. Today, I'm going to take a little break from Nerd Earth creationism and talk about another interesting bit of science. I want you to think of your favorite science fiction universe. Maybe it's Star Trek, maybe it's Star Wars, maybe it's the Mass Effect Galaxy, maybe it's Farscape, or maybe it's Halo. Whatever it is, chances are that your favorite science fiction universe is full of star-spanning alien civilizations made up of all sorts of different species, each of which probably evolved on its own homeworld somewhere in the galaxy. The thing is, a giant space-spanning empire, federation, hegemony, confederation, or whatever, is a rather hard thing to hide, even from primitive apes stuck on a single planet. The kinds of fictional alien races we see tend to be noisy, they send out transmissions all the time. Some of them even build megastructures that would change the light of their host stars as observed by distant observers. But never once in the history of science has there ever been any positive indication that an alien civilization exists, or has ever existed anywhere in the universe. As far as humans can tell, they are essentially alone on Earth and in the universe, the only species to ever build a technological civilization in the whole vastness of time and space. It's time to talk about the Copernican Principle. Copernicus was an astronomer who was largely responsible for creating the heliocentric model of the solar system. He also introduced the idea that humans on Earth are not privileged observers in the universe. They simply exist on one particular body, and that the heavens are full of such bodies, all of which are particular in their own ways, but none of which are privileged either. This idea has been generalized into the Copernican Principle, which states that there's nothing particularly special or unusual about the conditions or location of Earth. That's not to say that every place in the universe will be like Earth, but that other similar places in the universe should be expected, and there's nothing unique about Earth in a cosmic sense. So, if Earth is a fairly ordinary place, and there are plenty of other planets, stars, etc. in both our galaxy and other galaxies, then according to the Copernican Principle, we should expect that some of them have life, and that some of them have intelligent life, and that some of that intelligent life has a technological civilization. Essentially, this is the Drake Equation. The Drake Equation was first written down by Dr. Frank Drake. And if we knew the value for all of the terms, it would give us n, the number of active civilizations in our galaxy, which we could notice via their transmissions. The factors are the average rate of star formation in our galaxy, the fraction of those stars that have planets, the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets, the fraction of planets that could support life that actually develop life, the fraction of planets with life that develop civilizations, the fraction of civilizations that develop a level of technology that could be detected from Earth, and finally, the length of time for which such civilizations release detectable signals into space. Humanity hasn't figured out the values for virtually any of these factors, but most guesses at them that are intended to be reasonable seem to indicate that we should have a value for n that is higher than the observed result of 1, that being human civilization on Earth. Finally, we come to the real topic of the video. Since virtually all proposed values for the terms in the Drake Equation result in a universe with plenty of civilizations, where the heck is everyone? Why is Earth so alone? This apparent contradiction is called the Fermi Paradox, named after Enrico Fermi. There are a lot of proposed solutions to this, and spoilers, most of them are bad news for humanity. Now I hear you saying, hold up, wait, back up. All those sci-fi universes we thought about at the beginning have faster than light travel, and all sorts of other implausible technologies. But the real world probably makes faster than light travel impossible. And even if not theoretically impossible, it is probably such an energetic mode of travel that this is impractical and probably will never occur. So maybe that's it. The Fermi Paradox is just the result of the fact that it would be hard to get around the galaxy and so civilizations are just rare and spread out. This explanation has a few problems. The first is that we don't have to have aliens all throughout the galaxy to find them. Even if they're only on single planets, their transmissions should be spread through the galaxy at the speed of light. So unless they're extremely rare, such civilizations would be apparent to us if they existed in the right time frame for us to observe them. Another problem with this explanation is that it is based on a human time scale. If we imagine some hypothetical but physically plausible interstellar drives, then reaching Proxima Centauri, the star closest to the solar system, would be something that could be accomplished within a human lifetime. 
say, 40 years to be pessimistic. But that means that the closest few stars could all probably be reached by humans within a century or so of developing plausible interstellar drives, but not faster than light drives. At this point, though, there are now new locations from which ships can be sent out, namely those other stars and planets that humanity has reached. At this point, colonization of the galaxy is exponential, and while no single human is likely to ever live in more than two solar systems, humanity as a whole could colonize the entire galaxy in a few million years, which, on a cosmic scale, is a very short time. But this also means that if at any point in the past, more than a few million years ago, which is essentially right now in terms of the universe, another civilization had arisen and started colonizing space, even at sublight speed, then they should be everywhere in the galaxy by now. Their transmissions should be filling the Milky Way and perhaps even reaching the Andromeda Galaxy at this point. But this is obviously not the case. So the answer to the Fermi Paradox cannot simply be that interstellar travel is slow, because it is not nearly slow enough. Well, perhaps such a civilization does exist, but we're just not hearing them. Maybe they don't transmit, or maybe they send signals in a way we can't detect. This solution is possible, but not terribly plausible. Communication is an important part of any civilization, and it would probably be even more important for an advanced interstellar species than it would be for humans. And unless the technology of such aliens is truly exotic using physical processes we are not even aware of, which seems unlikely, then we should be able to detect those signals, even if not decode them. There must be some important reason why aliens would not send out detectable signals. One possible reason is that other civilizations might hear them and decide that the people sending the signals ought to be exterminated for some reason. Even if this is unlikely, grabbing the attention of hypothetical xenocidal aliens would be a pretty big risk, especially since they could be vastly superior in terms of technology, or even just number. So perhaps it is common to choose caution over being gregarious in the galaxy. It might be safer to simply listen for signals that could be a threat, and never bother trying to transmit anything that would be detectable, say, outside of a single solar system. Long-range communication could be accomplished with narrow-band transmissions, and broadcasts might only be powerful enough to be received on a scale that is less than that of a planet. While this solution to the Fermi Paradox doesn't get us our fun Star Trek-style galaxy, at least it means that perhaps we are not as alone as we think, and there is a possibility for humanity to spread out among the stars. Well, maybe civilizations just don't tend to move off-world. If that's the case, then a few scattered civilizations would be hard to detect, and the paradox is resolved. Again, this is possible, but not very plausible, as technology and the standard of living increase in a civilization. Energy consumption tends to also rise. Just look at humans. First world humans consume an enormous amount of energy just to do things like keep their houses cool and run their electronic gadgets. There is no reason to think that this will slow down, and even if the human population growth declines to a point where it is essentially zero, which is how it is trending right now, then energy consumption is likely to increase anyway. Eventually, there is likely to come a time, presuming humans don't go extinct, that the energy needs of the species will outgrow the ability for those needs to be met within a single solar system, at which point spreading outside of the solar system will be a necessity, and will likely also cause a corresponding increase in population as humans will be needed to direct and maintain extrasolar construction and colonization efforts. So it seems that civilizations either spread or go extinct, or just never develop much technology. This still does not explain the lack of observable megastructures. As a species needs more and more energy, they will at some point find themselves needing power that approaches the output of an entire star. This would require a solar system scale solar array, likely a fleet of satellites that would form what is sometimes called a Dyson Swarm. But such a swarm would be noticeable from Earth if the star it hosted isn't blocked by anything such as dust clouds. We would see frequent small dips in its brightness, and it would be dimmer than expected on average in most light frequencies. But because energy collection and use would create waste heat, the star should be brighter in the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum than expected. But despite there having been large surveys not only of our own galaxy, but thousands of other galaxies, no stars have ever shown any evidence of having been used to support a stellar scale civilization. So if technological civilizations can exist, which they obviously can, and it seems like they're not hiding from us, intentionally or otherwise, it really does seem like they simply aren't out there. So why not? Presumably, there is something that prevents such things from existing, or nearly prevents them. Such ideas fall under the category of a great filter. This is some hurdle to getting to the existence of a technological interstellar civilization that is so extreme that it makes such a thing essentially impossible. And if such a filter is something humans have not yet reached in their history, the outlook is grim.
For example, it may be that shortly after developing a technological civilization, creatures get to be so good at killing each other that they end up going extinct, or at least back to the Stone Age in various wars. Perhaps their demand for energy outstrips their ability to maintain ecological stability on their home planet, and they go extinct from catastrophic climate collapse before they ever make permanent colonies off-world. Heck, maybe the Great Old Ones hate interstellar species and just eat species that try it. Perhaps civilizations can get going in terms of reaching interstellar space, but on the period of a few thousand years they tend to die. Perhaps they find a paucity of resources they need away from their homeworld, or they become more violent. All of these are great filters that may lie in the future of humanity. And if these are the solution to the Fermi Paradox, it's bad news for Homo sapiens, because chances are that they won't be the species to overcome them, because humans just aren't that special according to the Copernican Principle. On the other hand, there is a brighter possibility for humanity, but it also means that the universe really is a lonely place. If the Great Filter lies behind humans, then they're already set. They may be the first species to get over that hurdle, and now have a bright future for the next few billion years. Some examples of this could be that life is just extremely unlikely, or that advancing past the stage of simple single cells almost never occurs, or even that the evolution of intelligence to the point of being able to develop technology is essentially unheard of. It could also be that each of these steps is very hard to overcome, such that at each step there is a vast reduction in viable populations to even attempt to get over the next step. One example of this is development of eukaryotic cells on Earth, which likely involved the endosymbiosis of bacteria into another cell. This probably only happened once, and so it is probably not a likely event. There could be other similarly large barriers to life becoming complex. In this case, it could be that humans are simply the first species to get to their current technological level. It is important to remember that in terms of the universe's likely lifespan during which life can reasonably form, we live in a young universe. There are likely tens of billions of years in the future during which star formation, supernovae, etc. will continue allowing planets to form, and allowing complex chemistry to eventually give rise to new life. Perhaps the steps to a technological society are nearly impossible. Humans are the first, but there will be hundreds, maybe even thousands or millions of future species that will accomplish interstellar flight in the future. This technological barrier may be more likely than it seems. Homo sapiens has existed as a species for tens of thousands of years, and for nearly all of that time, they were all hunter-gatherers using essentially the same technology that hominins had been using for over a million years. Only a few thousand years ago did humans build their first cities, and even then the rate of technological development was glacial until the Renaissance. It's possible that science and technology are just so unlikely to develop, even for an intelligent culture, that they essentially never do, and humans are an unbelievably rare exception. One rather hard-to-think-about version of this particular resolution to the Fermi Paradox is that if the multiverse idea is correct, and there are new universes coming about in an ever-expanding multiverse, then the creation of new universes increases in the multiverse exponentially. This also means that most civilizations at any given time are young, and so if they can develop technological civilizations, then most civilizations that exist will in fact be the first technological civilization in that universe. So perhaps humanity is just a typical example of such a species, that is, the first of its kind in the universe. There is also the possibility that civilizations essentially cannot develop, and that the one on Earth is in fact special. The Copernican principle doesn't logically have to be true. Earth could, despite astronomical indications to the contrary, be a privileged planet, put here with life on it by some being beyond our comprehension, and for whom the laws of the universe are not a barrier. This is an argument made by members of some religions, Although at this point, I think since humanity has only just begun to have any idea of how to find non-intelligent life in the universe, it's a bit too early to say that this is the Great Filter. What does this all mean for humanity as a whole? Well, it means that they will probably never find Wookiees or Klingons, or any other alien race. Humanity may not be alone in a strict sense, but chances are that if they ever detect another civilization, it will be in the distant future. And at that point, humanity may not be all that recognizably human anyway. In fact, various branches of humanity will probably seem quite alien to each other. It also means that humanity may have virtually no shot at survival in the long run. Humans may kill each other, or destroy the planet before being able to make self-sustaining colonies elsewhere. Mankind is not even close to being able to terraform any other planet, and it's unlikely that any planet will ever be as hospitable to humans as Earth. Perhaps we are now living in the only time in history where the mysteries of the cosmos are somewhat open to humanity before whatever it is that prevents civilizations from becoming interstellar happens to them. If it's the case that a great filter lies in the future, 
At least it's a thing that humanity can know is coming. Maybe that will help. But in reality, it probably won't matter. Either it's in the past, or humanity is likely doomed. On that rather sobering note, I will close this video. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share it and to subscribe to my channel. If you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll always know when there's more Dapper Dinosaur content available. If you really, really like this video, head over to my Patreon page and join the team there that's helping me make these videos. Each tier gets increasing rewards, and while most rewards only kick in after your first billing cycle, Discord and voting rewards are immediately applied. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur.